gents. Moxie Talk with Kurt Jacobs on the grounds at Keeneland Racecourse, the internationally renowned racetrack in Lexington, Kentucky. If you want chefs, we got them. If you want master distillers, we got them. Some of the best musical artists in the country are here this weekend. Stay tuned. Hey, ladies and gents, Kurt Jacobs here on location at the Railbird Festival at the historic, internationally renowned Keeneland Racecourse in Lexington, Kentucky, home of the bluegrass. And I'm here with the one, the only, Cedric Burnside. <laughs> Welcome, my friend. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Thanks, thanks for, for being with me. us. What thanks a performance, man. That was great. Wow. That thank was something you. else. So, what drives you to excel in your area of expertise? Oh, wow, man. Um, just, you know, the energy from from the crowd, you know, when they enjoy my music, mm -hmm. it just drives me to to keep creating, you know, mm -hmm. and and um, you know, the love, the passion I have for music sure. drives me as well, you know. What is it you like about Railbird? Oh wow, man, it, it's a beautiful festival, yeah. really big festival. Yeah. Uh, the crowds is excellent, man. The energy from the crowd today was so awesome, man. Yeah. It made me feel good. That's good. Um, and I, and I have to add this. With everything that's been going on, you know, with sure. COVID and all of that, sure. I'm just damn happy to be working, you know? <laughs> Amen. Who do you credit most influential in your life? I have an idea, but I don't want to share that with the audience. I'll let you yeah. answer. Well, uh, I would have to say, man, uh, my my big daddy, yeah. you know, Ayo Burnside. Uh, mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, and for, for those who don't know who big daddy is, that's, yeah. that's my grandfather. <laughs> Um, he, he was something, man. But he definitely, man, influenced me yeah. uh, the most out of out of anybody. You know? Yeah, I appreciate that. So, Cedric, what is the um, advice you'd give to somebody thinking about entering this career path? You know, you're considered a hill country blues artist, but, you know, regardless of gender, ethnicity, socioeconomic background, you know, male, female, the whole nine yards, what advice would you offer them? Well, uh, I, I, I would definitely say, man, um, you know, man, woman, boy, girl, um, I, I would say don't quit. Okay. You know, um, it, it takes determination. And um, as long as you got that strong determination, you know, um, quitting is, is not an option. Yeah. You know, um, it, you, you wouldn't want to quit if you got that determination. Mm -hmm. um, if you really want something, you know, really bad, you got to push yourself to Sure. to get it you know and so that's that's the advice i would tell them it's not to quit you know when did you discover that this was going to be your pathway you know your your oh, aha wow. moment as i call it <laughs> wow well to be honest man um you know my my big daddy and 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 my dad and uncles um growing up as a kid six seven years old mm -hmm. Um, they used to play house parties you know on the on the nice. front porch and and even in the house when it rained uh -huh. And I, I will be one of, you know, several grandkids sitting there in amazement, you know, sure. um, watching it. And and that music, it always t just touched me. Got you, you know, deep always. down, right? Yeah. yeah. And and so I knew at a young age, I want to play this music. This is what I want to do mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. I knew that yeah. when I was about six, seven years old, you know. And so when did you get into it? Did you just start? Was it an evolution or was it like I made a decision and I went for it? Oh, I, I definitely made a decision, man. Okay. I, I I knew I wanted this, That's great. and um, what nothing else in my mind, what nothing else in my rim, I straight to that. You know, um, I, I started off playing drums. Okay. Um, and so um, uh, I jumped on the drums for the first time. I was about seven years old, you know, and and um, you know, it didn't matter if I could play good or not. You know, yeah. breaking the ice was just jumping up there. You know. Yeah. Uh, I jumped up there and and people started saying, "Look at that little young kid, man. He gonna be good someday, you know." Yeah. And um, you know, when when I turned about ten years old, I was good enough to play in the juke joints. That's great. You know, so they was hiding me behind the beer coolers. Yeah. When the police come in, you know, me and my uncle Gary Burnside. Yeah. <laughs> because we was the band, you know. Exactly. Um, and I did my first tour at age thirteen. Really. First professional tour with my big dad at age thirteen. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Been doing it ever since, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So let me ask you this. If you were to take the musical stage with five musicians, it can be less. It's kind of tough to get five. Yeah. They can be famous, not famous, living or deceased. Who would it be and maybe why? Well, um, I will have to say, man, um, 
One of them would be my big daddy. Sure. Of course, R.L. Burnside. R.L., that's my man. I love him. And and the other one would be my dad. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason I picked those two um, is because that's where that's where I come from. You know, it's, it's, it's my bloodline. And I, I would have loved to be able to play the guitar one time with my yeah. big daddy. Never got that chance. Nah, I'm sorry, man. And I would I would have loved to be able to play a song with my dad playing drums. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that would have been so freaking cool. Yeah. I watched my dad along with uh, Kenny Kimbrough and uh, Artemis LaSure growing up as a kid. Those was the guys, my mentors. You yeah. Know? So I, I really would love to have took the stage with them. Um, I, I love Lightning Hopkins. You know, my big daddy played him for me a lot. Uh, I love his style. I love his voice. Um, and one of my main guys, man, I wish I could have met and played with um, Mississippi Fred McDowell. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, that's, one, that's one of my guys. Boom, man. I love it. Love yeah. that dude. Uh huh. <laughs> so, what's the best piece of advice ever given to you, Cedric? And it can be more than one, personal or professional. Well, um, you know, just I, I grew up with my big daddy, mm -hmm. you know, from a kid to I was old enough to move out on my own. And, um, one of the things he used to always tell me is, you know, treat people like you want to be treated. Absolutely. You know, um, and so that stuck with me. It always went with me. And I'm not going to say I always treated people like I wanted sure, to be sure. treated, you know, but um, I'm learning, you know, and, uh, and more and more every day. And I try to implement it more and more in my life, you know, mm -hmm. as I go through my journey, you know. Do you ever feel like you're misunderstood? Oh, <laughs> yeah, all the time. I love it. <laughs> you're a not lot. human if you're not misunderstood. A lot, man. Yeah. You'd, be, you'd be surprised. Or, may, or maybe not. <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, it's a human condition. That's why I love asking that question. So how many albums have you written and how many songs have you written roughly? It doesn't oh, have to be wow. exact. Uh, I think total uh, about nine. Wow. You know, eight, nine. Um, and each song, each album had about 12 songs on it, okay. 12 to 13. Jeez. Close to 100 yeah, songs, roughly maybe. 100. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. if you could pick one song on planet Earth, and that can be a famous song or a song nobody knows. It can be written by an artist nobody knows or is famous, living or deceased. What song would it be and maybe why? Oh, wow. Um, I would have to say Bird Without a Feather. Ah, uh, okay. Um, that's a song that my big daddy used to play all the time mm -hmm. um as many songs he used to play that i loved mm -hmm. but that particular song man um it is so unorthodox yeah. you know um it's so unorthodox it, it it's it's just streams mississippi mm -hmm. you know and and my big daddy was you know he was um known for hill country blues being a hill country legend and and then just the the rhythm Mm -hmm. You know, which was an unorthodox rhythm of his his style. It's just who he was, and so I think that song right there represents hill country blues. Yeah, you know, the, in, in the unorthodox rhythm that it has. You know, now that's our, why. Now our show's called Moxie Talk for a reason. And Moxie, for those that might not know, it's courage, it's grit. Got that grit, baby. Yeah, exact, baby. I love it. <laughs> Where do you find your Moxie? What 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 drives you in that Moxie moment? You know, when nobody's oh, wow, looking, man. as I say. You know, when it's you got to get up and you got to go play a festival and we're all human. You love what you do, but you don't feel like it. Well, you know, man, I, I have to say, um, you know, besides me having my passion and my love for my music, you know, that that gives me, you know, courage and stuff to to keep on going, um, because with my music, I reach people, you know, they can they can some people can relate to my music. Um, but also my family, you know, I, I have three daughters um, and, and they all just about grown now, you know, uh, my youngest is 16. She just turned 16. Um, and, you know, my, my, my wife, they give me that grit and, and that extra push to keep on going, you know, to take care of what I need to take care of. You know? So what do you consider to be your biggest career achievement? And it could be personal as well. It can be more than one. So there's really no wrong answer. Well, um, you know, um, recently, I, and I have to say this before I, I say anything about this, I have to say I, I did not know what this award was. Mm -hmm. I never heard of it before. 
Um, but have you ever heard of the National Endowment Award? Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. So yes. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to um, win that award this year, you know, 2021. That's great. Uh, and uh, the youngest to ever, ever win it, you know, so. Really? Um, and it's also the highest honor in the nation that you can get. And um, it's, it's such an honor, man. I, I, I don't have words for it. I, I don't really know, you know, how to explain the joy, you know, um, but I, I am so grateful, you know. Wow, that's Very amazing. Very grateful. I did not know that. That is amazing. Yeah. That's cool, man. So we asked this question, you know, you're, you're our 370th guest, 15 oh, wow. years, <laughs> you're number 370. You know, God forbid, Cedric, you walk out of the Railbird Festival today for whatever reason. It's your last day on earth. You know, how do you want to be remembered by family, friends, fans, colleagues, band members? I could go on. How do you want to be remembered? Well, uh, I will have to say, man, I, I, I want to be remembered for the love that I put out in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I know most people would say music and all of that. I, sure. I feel like my music will, will always be here. Yeah. Um, you know, because I don't I don't record it several albums. So all you have to do is pick it up and listen to it. Exactly. So I, I want to be remembered for the love that I put out in the world, yeah. you know, and, and not just love for, you know, immediate family or, or good friends, but unconditional love for people I don't even know, you know, yeah. just people in the street, you know. Well, I appreciate that. Cedric, I want to thank you for your rawness, your oh, authenticity, wow, man. <laughs> and I'm humbled and honored thank you, you so took much your for having time me. to be on Moxie Talk with Kirk Jacobs. Hey, thanks for having me, man. <laughs> and we'll be back with more here at the Railbird Music Festival All right. here at the Keeneland Racecourse <laughs> in Lexington, Kentucky, Bluegrass State.